are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. We should all have been joined to the house of our God. We should all have been joined to the house of our God. We should all have been joined to the house of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome to our celebration. Today is the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And God always invites us. He calls us every day. He never fails. He never stops calling us to be with him. But at times we don't know about it. We are not aware of it. We don't listen to it because we are so preoccupied with so many things. We say we are busy to listen to his invitation. Today he again invites us specifically when he says, come to me all you who labor and find life burdensome and I will give you rest. It's a nice invitation. Only a fool would turn down that invitation. Hopefully we are not fools. And hopefully also when we hear that invitation today, we will respond and try not to harden our hearts. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we come together to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, my God. 
Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the fool of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. Let 
Let all your words give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful let one bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. faithful in all his words, and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling, and raises up all who are bowed down. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your grace's will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon your shoulder and learn from me. For I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once in a while, we get or receive an invitation. We are invited to a party, a birthday party, a wedding party, a despedida or bienvenida. And we, we are invited, you may, you may go or you may not go. There's no pressure. Nobody is coercing you, forcing you to attend. You have the freedom to accept or not to accept such invitation. But when you receive an invitation and it says RSVP, then you have to reply whether you want to go or not to go. RSVP means it's a formal one, but French people seldom use it now because it's too formal and it's old-fashioned. But if someone says, hey, there's going to be a party tonight, are you coming? And if you say, no, I'm not so sure, then you miss the fun. You are not a cool person. You are boring. So when they say that, they say, be there or be square. It's an exciting party, but since you turn it down, you're so boring and you're so uncool. In today's gospel, Jesus invites all of us, regardless of who you are. He invites us when he says, come to me all you who labor and find life burdensome and I will give you rest. It's an open invitation. There's no force. You are not coerced to respond, to say yes or no. It's just an invitation. He doesn't say you have to be there or be square. It's up to us because he respects our freedom to choose. But as what I've said in the introduction, only a fool would turn down such invitation because that invitation is so cool, refreshing, and nourishing. And it says, come to me all you who labor and find life burdensome and I will give you rest. It's such a very perfect timing type of invita invitation. Such a wonderful invitation in this time of pandemic when most of us are suffering from tiredness, so weary and at times hopeless because of this situation that we are not in control of. And at times we give up to the point that we lose our faith and trust in God. And we say and we ask, when is this going to end? For how long are we going to suffer? But today, God is so specific to us. When you are tired and weary, come to me and I will give you rest. Such words are so comforting. No us for he will give us rest. The whole point of today's gospel when Jesus says and invites us, come to me all you who labor and find life burdensome is he challenges us to carry our own crosses and follow him. At times our crosses are so heavy to carry that we are not able to do it. We lose faith, we lose courage, we become frustrated and desperate. But Jesus again in today's words, Come to me all you who are weary and find life burdensome and I will give you rest. He doesn't say this is a worry-free life anymore because you are with me, I'm with you. 
that there will be no pain, no trouble at all. No, he doesn't say that. But he will let us go through this time of crisis, this pandemic, but he assures us that we are not alone as we go through this life. He assures us that when we carry our crosses, we are not by ourselves. He is always there, present, to help us to lift up our burdens and carry our own crosses. Because this is the God whom we believe in, a God who always helps us, a God who does not abandon us. That's what I've said. This is a very perfect timing today when we are experiencing tiredness, weariness because of the pandemic. And sometimes we don't have anybody to turn to. We are lucky, we are blessed if we have somebody whom we can call, communicate, talk to him or to her to lift us up. But we need God also to give us strength, courage, and comfort in this time of trials. His words today are very real, very practical. Come to me, all you who labor, and find life burdensome. If we are tired, sometimes we do things that are not very practical. But today, if we have something to turn to, the word of God in today's gospel is very real. It gives us strength. It nourishes us. It gives us comfort. I suggest that if you feel tired, if you are in doubt, aside from calling your friends to be with others, try to read something in the Bible. Look for a scripture passage that could help you, nourish you, strengthen you in times of need, in times of trouble, in times of weariness. For instance, when I feel I'm in doubt, I say and I pray to the Lord, Lord, help my unbelief. If I make a decision, and at times the decision is so hard, I say to the Lord, into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, not my will, but yours be done. Come to me, all you who labor. When I feel tired, I recite this passage of the scripture to strengthen me, to me. Please stand and we will now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus reveals to us that God is gentle and compassionate, slow to anger, and of great kindness. This prompts us to approach the Father we trust as we pray. Father, listen to the prayers of your children. Father, listen to the prayers of your children.
Okay, thank you. May the church under Pope's, Pope Francis's leadership stand up to the cause of peace, justice, and love, especially in places where war, oppression, and the culture of death continue to reign. We pray. Father, Father listen, listen to, to the, the prayers, prayers of, of your children. children. May our bishops, priests, and deacons prove to be worthy ministers by their simplicity of life and their words of solace and encouragement. We pray. Father, Father listen, listen to, to the, the prayers, prayers of, of your, your children. children. May the leaders of nations and all government officials work for peace and justice and attend to the welfare of the poor and the homeless. We pray. Father, Father listen, listen to the prayers of your children. May those who are oppressed by dehumanizing systems, elderly people weighed down by loneliness, and families separated by quarrels and financial problems find a consolation in you. We pray. Father, Father listen, listen to the prayers of your children. May the Lord give healing hope and comfort to those who are sick and abandoned by their family, and may eternal rest be granted to those who have died today, we pray. Father, Father listen, listen to the prayers of your children. For all of us, may we never lose faith and hope amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, and find strength to express social solidarity with one another, we pray. Father, Father listen, listen to, to the, the prayers of your, your children. For all the frontliners, may God embrace and protect them as they continue their loving service. We pray. Father, Father listen, listen to the, the prayers of your children. For those, let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our pastoral intentions. We pray. Father, Father listen to the prayers of your children. Heavenly Father, hear our supplications. Do not allow us to be overwhelmed by confusion, doubt, and discord, but fill us with faith and courage in Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, the Lord, and day by day bring our contact closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord to be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May of our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, o Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us to body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, brought it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was entered, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and forged by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I curfew. you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Lazio Imperata. Almighty, ever-living God, source of all mercy and compassion, we come to you in these times of dire need and tremendous suffering. The lives of your people are beset by grave tribulation brought about by COVID-19. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray for all health workers who are the frontliners in this fight for survival, doctors, nurses, hospital staff, and personnel who have themselves fallen under the weight of their immense duties and responsibilities in serving those who are infected with the disease. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease, and for those who have succumbed to the sickness, eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for workers who tirelessly serve the needs of all the people, those in authority, in keeping peace and security, and those responsible in leading us defeat this terrible scourge. Keep them strong and constant in their commitment to the midst, in the midst of this difficult battle. We pray for those who have been infected by the virus, the dying, and those who have died in agony and loneliness. Let their suffering be their participation in the suffering of your son. We pray lastly for the swift resolution of the sickness, for the discovery of a cure, and the restoration of the normal lives of peoples and communities. We ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, and our divine leader, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Mother of perpetual help, pray for us. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is entered. Thanks be to God. Oh, 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 oh,